chosen ones, empaths, you got to realize that the narcissist, especially when they discard, they don't give you closure, right? And one reason why they don't give you closure is because they've been trying to isolate you from the very beginning. They try and isolate you and have you to themselves. Now, one of the worst fears of the narcissist is that you see through them and you find companionship or love elsewhere. They're very jealous and insecure. So, at times when you were with them and you used to visit family or you'd visit friends, they would always try and use an isolation tactic. They might turn you against their friends. They might turn the friends against you. They would act in a certain way that would cause a rift between you and your close ones. You know, they might start an argument every time you go out with your friends. You know, in a healthy relationship, it's good to have time apart. But the narcissist needs you. And they feel like if you go out of your friends, your friends might wake you up and make you realize that you're with the scum of the earth, the bottom of the barrel. You know, they, they, they feel this way about themselves. They know they're scum. They know they're disgusting human beings. It's why they could never understand how you love them. They can't reciprocate your love because they know they're nasty. They know they're nasty. They know they're really nasty, you know, disgusting, dusty weirdos, right? So it reminds me of a time, you know, I used to uh, go and visit my father. And every time I used to go and visit my father, right, every single time the narcissist would start an argument. They would just start an argument out of nothing. And there's me, people fixing Right, I'd rush back round to the narcissist's house and have it out with them and then make up, you know. But each time I'd done that, I was actually losing a part of my soul, you know. I didn't see what was happening. Friends at the time used to say to me, like, yo, you don't you don't come and check for me anymore. You don't you don't reach out to me, you don't phone me, you don't And these were like close friends that I'd known since school, you know. And I didn't see what was happening, you know, a lot of what I went through, I was so blindly in love, I didn't see what was happening to me, you know, but I've actually lost relationships with friends still to this day over what happened with the narcissist because, you know, I had a good friend and I'm sure you've been through this as well, like I had a real good friend and we, we used to do everything together and when I met the narcissist, I just let that relationship just die, you know? It, it literally killed the relationship between me and my friend. And my friends used to reach out when I used to be with the narcissist, and I didn't really give him the time of day. And it's very sad to say because things have done a... I look at the benefits of it now. It's like when I broke up with the narcissist, I tried to rekindle the relationship, but it was too far gone, you know? Spending some years with the narcissist away from my friend, it's like we kind of, we both went in different directions now. And it's like there's still love there, but I think that he always holds a bit of resentment against me because I left him in the lurch, you know, I left him alone um, when I was his closest friend. But the narcissist done this on purpose to me, you know, they, they, they isolated me from my friends, they isolated me from my family. Um... They made me basically be there all the time with them. And this is why, you know, when they go for the discard, they've really premeditated it all. They've premeditated it all. And it's another selfish action from them. It's another very selfish action from them. Because they know if they cut you off at this point, they've seen how we're a bit codependent. They've seen it if they cut us off at that point in the time when they've done it. They actually hit us at our worst. They also know, <clears throat> because they've isolated us so much, 
and the time they've chose to do it, um, you know, they know that they're isolating us further. They know they're isolating us further now because they realize they isolated us along during the relationship. They isolated us from our friends, from our family. So they believe that if I discard you at this point, that you're just going to be dependent upon me. And they made us in to a codependent in a way. I don't want any of you people thinking, oh, I'm a codependent. I need someone like they made us feel this way. It can be such a dangerous tactic that they use that it can actually make us rush into relationships after. It can make us want to find someone immediately after because we feel like we need someone by our side. And I just want you to understand that the strength resides in you and there's a power in being alone, you know. And some of the most beautiful times I've experienced, I've experienced it on my own. I'm not saying it was all sunshine and rainbows. Initially, I, I felt like I wanted someone else. I... You know, I, I used to think I still like them, I still love them. But once we find out about this narcissism and what is what their real true motive is behind it, once we find out about that, you know, we've it's we there's no looking back. These these individuals are so messed up in their heads that like you know those days that you used to go to work or you used to go to a course or you used to go and study or you used to just be out of the house doing your thing, whatever it might be, running your business. They used to feel resentment and jealousy. They feel jealous about you being with your friends. They feel jealous about you being with your family. Some of them are so messed up that they like to come with you everywhere you go. They have to be there. They can't just give you space. A chosen one and an empath need space. We need space. We need alone time to fully function and be our best versions of ourselves. Some of us don't realize that yet, but it's so draining and taxing on the soul of being around people constantly. It's so taxing, man. It drains us. Like, I didn't realize this, like, until... <clears throat> I, I knew it when I was with the narcissist, but I didn't know why I used to do it, right? Like... I remember I used to wake up in the morning and the narcissist used to drain me um drain me sexually. Like they used to drain me sexually. Like I'll be open and honest now. They used to drain me out. Like they always wanted to do it. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? But I used to want my alone time. So I remember I used to wake up on the weekends after I'd been working all week and you know, I used to go in the kitchen and make breakfast or something and have something small to eat or whatever. And I used to love my music on my phone. I used to love listening to music, you know. There were some real influential artists out there that, like, their music was really helping me at that time. It was like they used to come with these songs that, like, just matched my life at that time, you know. And I used to love listening to it. And I used to go in the kitchen and... I'll be listening to the music and then they would come in the kitchen and they would make me jump, yeah, like, because they used to come in and they'd, they'd look disgusting, like, they would actually look disgusting on their face, like, and they'd be like, what are you doing? And I'll be like, oh, like, and it would make me, like, it would make me startled, man, like, it used to startle me, like, and it was like, they just wanted me to wake up and be intimate with them like however many times a day and i know you lot are probably gonna think zion like what's wrong with you like why, why wasn't you into that but like it's because my body was craving alone time my body was craving the need to be alone so even though they were trying to <coughs> they isolated me i know it you know it kind of contradicts what i'm saying about the isolation but it's like there's a difference between being isolated from friends and family and needing alone time because a true empath, you know, we can go out, we can have fun, we can mingle with people, we can, you know, but it really is taxing on our body and it's like we need time to recharge after that. It's like after spending a long duration of time and it's like the narcissist doesn't give you that space. Like, they don't give you that space. Like, if you go out with your friends, you have to constantly check in with them or they're constantly checking in with you, they're texting you, they're messaging you, they're... They're so, and then when it comes to the discard, it's like you're used to all of that energy, not energy, that's the wrong word, all of that 
um, like, well, how can I put it? You're used to all of that pressure from them, right? Because it is pressure. You know, you're used to all of that pressure from them constantly with the messages, the phone calls, the in your face, they're not giving you space, they're not giving you time with your friends or your family. You're used to all of that pressure. So when it finally they put a discard on and they go silent on you, you're left feeling like you want that again. And it's their way of tricking you to believe that you want that. It's their way of tricking you to believe that you need that. And it's their way of tricking you to believe you. They're conditioning you. They're actually brainwashing you. You know? And, you know, I certain jobs were in jeopardy of mine, like, from the narcissist. Like, the narcissist would cause drama during the day. Like, I remember one time I used the toilet, right? And the narcissist got insecure because I used the toilet. Why are they getting insecure? Because they used the toilet. I was working at an airport and they're thinking that I'm going to have flings in toilets. Like, they're proper insecure, you know? Like, they, they, they thought that I'm... Just because I didn't answer the phone and I was in the toilet, they took it as, oh, I'm doing something. And it's because it's their guilty mind. It's their guilty mind, man. But please, people, like... If you've got friends and you can still rekindle these friendships, you know, if you can still rekindle these friendships with or close ones or family members, please do. Because I've tried to rekindle a relationship with a friend, but it hasn't worked out. I have tried, you know, but it's like we've both grown so much and we've grown up separate. Like we've just both gone in different directions now. Um, we used to always work together because we worked in the same uh, industry um we used to i've done jobs with him since the narcissist and we'd work together and we crack joke and you know it was like same old days but he's kind of moved on with his life and i've moved on with mine and it happened for a reason because there was an actual another narcissist that was about at this time and it's like i've gone through this isolation from people because Initially, I was with this friend, but there was another psychopath or a narcissist that was in the friendship circle, right? And they were very demanding. Like, they got insecure as well. Like, if we went out without them or if that they were constantly, like, even when I met the narcissist now, the ex-narcissist, they used to bang on my phone. Like, they used to be like, where are you? What are you doing? Like, constantly. Like, and this was a friend and it was like they was getting jealous and I was being pulled in between two people. I was being imp imp pulled between a psychopath and a narcissist that I didn't know was a narcissist yet. And I was being tugged in between. And I kind of went with the narcissist ex as a place of refuge. And I left my friend, this is what I'm saying, I left my friend alone with the psychopath, right? And I feel guilty about that now, but it did work out for the best because my friend's gone on, he's made other friends, um... He's gone on and got on his journey and he's kind of cut away from... So we needed it to happen to try and... I, we, to, to cut away from the psychopath that was involved in the group, you know. And they're really strange individuals, man. I've, I've had a lot of toxic people in my life and it's like... They love isolating you. Their main primary goal... I used to have so many friends around me, like... More than I can count on my fingers, right? And... I let this person, not an ex-narcissist, but I let this person in, into my into my group, um, and all my friends disappeared. They they made me do things against my other friends that I wouldn't normally do, like horrible things. And um, a lot of my friends just they cut away, and they used. To, I was being groomed. I was being groomed by by this psychopath. Um, you know, it's it's really messed up, but like, so I've kind of taken a different route to my other friend. My other friend, like, he, he got away from it all as well. I got away from it, but I thought my refuge was this new relationship. That's what I found. That's how the nut, like, so I got pulled from, I went from one childhood psychopath to another childhood psychopath to this narcissist ex. And I went through this chain of events and it was years of my life that I went through these events. And it's only me looking back now when I woke up to narcissistic abuse, psychopaths, and I woke up to it all. I can actually see how all of these individuals 
tried to isolate me from my family. They they isolated me from my friends. They 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 just stuck a fork in the road, man. And they they they're really deranged individuals. You know, they don't like to see you doing well. They don't want to see you work. You know, they'll get they they get jealous of you working. They they're really messed up. And I know I've talked a lot about myself today, but I want you to try and see what I'm saying because this happens this this happens to us and. When you wake up to narcissistic abuse, you see so-called friends that are so toxic. You see manipulators. You, you see it all and you can't believe that you were so blind. They literally took us for granted. And they took us for granted and it's like... They've tried to get in contact with me since. But I, I'm just on my own path now, man. I ain't got time for it. I love my alone time and it's like... I've really needed this alone time to recharge. And it's how, like, if I had these people in my face every day, I wouldn't have time to make videos. I wouldn't have reached out on YouTube and met all of you people. It's great that we've got a community like we do, and it's it's, it's very special, and I'm I'm thankful for it, you know. It's, it's, it's really beautiful, and all of you lot are so loyal and supportive, and all of your comments and everything like that, it's like... You know, we're, we're separate from distance in the world, but our hearts are so close together. You know, we, we've been through the same stuff. And, you know, if, if this is fresh to you, I don't want... I hope you're still here in the video, but if it's fresh to you, I just want you to understand that if you've just gone through a discard or something, I want you to understand that you'll look back at this time and you'll realise that spending alone time away from these toxic individuals is some of the most beautiful days you'll have. Honestly speaking, like, coming... I know it might not seem like at the start, but as time goes on, and I'm not saying time heals, as I always say, time doesn't heal, but we learn how to deal with it, you'll realise that it's a beautiful blessing that's happening. It's a real beautiful blessing that is happening. And God is kind of orchestrating it all, and he's putting you by yourself for a reason. He's isolating you. Now God's isolating you for a reason because he wants you to wake up to the abuse around you. He wants you to wake up to these toxic individuals and he doesn't want you to engage with them anymore. So I know, you know, this video was about the, the narcissist tries to isolate you and have you to themselves. But when God isolates you, it's something different. It's a special something because... God's caused the separation from you and the narcissist for whatever reason. God's caused this separation. Well, I know what the reason is. He's, he's caused this separation for you to see your true worth and your true value and your true beauty. He's, tr he's isolating you now. And I want you to enjoy this period of alone time. Do not rush into it with anyone else. Do not confide in anyone else. You can confide in someone who you know is, is straight up, you know. You can confide in friends and family that you know are down to earth, right? But I'm just saying be careful of confiding in a new relationship partner if you don't know them too well yet. You know, I don't want you to try and heal your pain through someone new because it doesn't work. The best thing you can do, the best thing you can do is try and heal yourself first with the, with the, with the aid of God. Heal yourself and get to a point when, you, when you're past the narcissist and you don't want them back. And that's the beginning of your heal. That's the beginning of a significant step in your healing journey when you don't want them back. For a period of time, you will want them back. You will desire them back. You will miss the glove bomb. You will miss all of that. But you will hit a point when you realize that you're worth so much more and you don't need someone like this in your life. So please, if they're, if they're trying to isolate you from friends and family, go out of your friends and family. Go out, have a good time. Don't care what the narcissist says. You know, try and cut the narcissist off as soon as possible. Try and do it, get out quietly. Try and get out quietly because I, I, I went out all guns blazing and it was the mistake that I made. You know, I, I should have just gone out, slipped away quietly, packed my bag and just gone. You know, we have a right to end relationships that we don't want to be in. We have a right to end friendships we don't want to be in. And... You know, if someone's pestering you, they're ringing your phone, they're constantly putting pressure on your mind and you feel trapped, God will make a way out for you. Just just work with God, trust in the process. And I promise you, I felt trapped before. I felt like I can't escape. I felt like there's no way out. 
but the way that things unfold in life, something's going to happen. It's just around the corner where you have a reason to get out. Now, my original reason for getting out is I was attacked by the psychopath friend, right? I was attacked by the psychopath friend and I retaliated and thanks to my, um, I retaliated and it kind of stopped the connection being so strong between us. Like where I just started doing my own thing and I was getting engaged with the new narcissist thinking they're my, my wife and I'm thinking they're, you know, going to be my wife. And, you know, it, it helped for a really, like it worked out all the best, you know, even though I went with another narcissist, it still worked out better because I escaped the clutches of a, of a psychopath, you know. Um, but police people just... I know I've I've drifted off in and out on this video. I do apologize. I do apologize. But these lot are really selfish. They're insecure. And they don't like to see you with anyone else. They don't like to see you work. They don't like to see you doing well for yourself. And they want to isolate you. So please don't let them isolate you. If you've got friends that you can rekindle a relationship with, rekindle it. It's worth it, man. So anyway, thank you for watching today. Please press the like and the subscribe button. If you'd like to donate to the channel, you can find the link in the description box. And if you'd like a one-to-one -one session myself, you can also find the link in the description box. Currently, I've got a secondary channel, a spiritual channel. So anyway, I'll be back with another video soon. Peace.